thanks for checking out the Bosch and Roll channel. If you want to see your deck featured on the channel, hang out with me and the amazing Bosch and Roll community on Discord. Access to my list and sideboard guides before tournaments, or book an individual coaching session. Check out the Patreon and YouTube member links in the video description. Use the code Bosch and Roll to get 10% off the best magic apparel on the market at coalesceapparel.shop. If you want to play what I'm playing, use my affiliate link to order cards from tcgplayer.com or play any deck anytime with a Magic Online loan account from cardhoarder.com. Thanks again for being here. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm doing something crazy. This is Contamination from Patreon subscriber Swaggery. What this deck's trying to do is resolve the card Contamination and keep it in play. This is one of those miserable cards from the early days of Magic. Two and a black enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice contamination unless you sacrifice a creature. If a land is tapped for mana, it produces black instead of any other type and amount. This is very much in that blood moon, choke, flash fires, etc. Boil range of cards that they were into in the late 90s that are generally just terrible, but it's cool they exist. At least this one has a pretty significant drawback to keep it in play of sacrificing a creature every turn. What I've done with the deck is use the discard spells. We got three Thoughtseize for him to Turok to try to clear the way for contamination. And then we have Bitter Blossom as a four of. That makes a creature every turn that you can sacrifice to keep your contamination around. Jadar, Ghoul Caller of Nephalia. There's two of those in here. At the beginning of your end step, if you control no creatures with Decayed, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed. It doesn't matter that it decays. It's not. We're not going to attack with it. We're going to sack it on the next upkeep to Contamination. And one Ophiomancer. At the beginning of each upkeep, if you control no snakes, create a 1-1 black snake creature token with Death Touch. This one makes a token on each upkeep. You could trade off the snake in combat and then still make a snake to sack to Contamination. A little bit of the, the smorgasbord here of token makers, but I think Bitter Blossom is the best one. Because that one can also win a game on its own if you don't have Contamination or have another sack outlet or whatever. Bitter Blossom is just great. Powerful magic card from many formats. Defined many formats it was involved in. Some structural stuff I want to talk about with this deck is the list that Swaggery originally sent me was built more like a Pox deck. Like it had more Wastelands, it had Urza Saga in it, there was an Urza Saga package. But I think that this deck having a large number of lands in play is going to be important because it's not a cantrip deck. It's not a loam deck like many of the box decks I play. That's a, a big strike against Wasteland in general or Saga or lands that die on their own over the natural course of the game. I just wanted a higher land count with more stable lands. So we got 15 basic swamps in here which might be a little heavy. We could probably get some more Nurturing Peatlands in the mix. I thought about Cabal Coffers, but I also want to mitigate my own exposure to Wasteland wherever possible. So I'm just going heavy on the 15 basic swamps with a couple Urborgs and some tech lands on the sides. And the reason I backed off of Wasteland is we're not really doing anything that rewards wasting the opponent. A normal Pox deck you wasteland a couple times, you cast a small pox or two, and your opponent might genuinely have no lands to cast their spells left. If you have life from the loam, naturally recurring wasteland is really powerful, but we're not doing any of that stuff. But we are trying to resolve a three mana spell that just functionally destroys all lands in many matchups. I mean, some decks are just black, like contam Contamination versus Reanimator is pretty embarrassing, but we'll talk about that later. This is just like functional Armageddon, one-sided Armageddon, if it pops off against most legacy decks. And when you're building towards an Armageddon, why are you spending any effort at all on Wasteland? It's kind of contrary to the plan. And we're not really backing it up with anything. So I decided to build the deck more like Doomsday than like Pox. And what I mean by that is there's Discard to Disrupt, Dark Ritual to Accelerate, and all of these supporting casts, the Bitter Blossom, the Jadar, uh, everything is just here to support this three mana black card that we're trying to resolve on a clear stable board. While this is a prison deck, 
it doesn't really play like one from a deck building perspective. It plays more like show and tell. It plays more like doomsday. We really need this thing to stick for our deck to make much sense at all. Because believe it or not, Jadar Ghoul Caller of Nefalia is not a legacy card. I've never seen it before in my life before this list right now. And we may never see it again. But Contamination is, is a messed up card if we could stick it. That's why the decisions have been made in the way that they are. Uh, Chrome Mox and Dark Ritual are my fast mana of choice. Dark Ritual as a four of is just kind of a no-brainer here. We've got the Thought Seizes, the Hymn to Tarox. We've got Opposition Agent and Liliana in the, the flex slots. Dothy Voidwalker is a pretty sweet one. Dark Ritual, Voidwalker, Thoughtseize could just be a Jace the Mind Sculptor. It could be a Grizzlebrand. You never know. It's a pretty good way to spend three mana. Dark Ritual, just great in this type of deck. And I went with Chrome Mox over Mox Diamond for the reasons I mentioned earlier, that we're not a loam deck. Our land count's going to matter. We want to hit our land drops, and we want to keep lands in play. But I did want a little more fast mana in the deck, and I don't think Lotus Petal was the answer I was looking for. And contrary to Loam Pox, which I've said many times I don't like Chrome Mox in because every one of your spells is important, and any time you pitch any card, it's a huge hit because you need every card to win, this deck doesn't. Like, the second Contamination is bad. The second Bitter Blossom is probably bad. If they're already in a Contamination, you don't need Sudden Edict. Like, maybe, maybe they're a combo deck. Get rid of your Sudden Edict. Maybe they're... A control deck. Slow down a little bit. Pitch a Dark Ritual. Maybe they're Hellbent. Pitch a Thought Caesar Hymn to Tarak. Like, the, the cards in this deck are not as individually important as the cards in Lone Box are, as long as we work towards Contamination. So I like Chrome Mox as a two of just to supplement the Dark Rituals. I hope that made any sense the way I described it. It makes sense in my head. I hope I communicated it well. The supporting cast of the Contamination lock, we got... Dark Confidant, just a way to pull ahead on cards once people are farting around. Because Contamination, if you just curve Thoughtseize, Bitter Blossom, Contamination, the Thoughtseize is two life, the Bitter Blossom is life a turn. You have 16 turns to win the game. You have to attack with something or pull ahead somehow. Dark Confidant, a little risky with the life total. Another pressure on the life total in that world. But you have ways to kill your own Dark Confidant and pivot onto a different creature over time if you're playing the game of Magic and your opponent is not. Bob seems pretty great. Also, if you don't curve into Contamination, Bob is just something that's going to flush out removal. Or if it sticks, it's going to draw cards. Just a really powerful way to spend two black mana. Dothy Voidwalker is another sort of soft prison element that also attacks really well. A lot of decks in the format use their graveyard. The incidental power on Dothy Voidwalker is great. The hardest slots in the deck were Opposition Agent and Liliana. Swaggery's original deck had four Oppo Agents and one Liliana. And I think we need more answers to Merktide region than that. So I went two and two. Swaggery also had less discard than I did. So uh, some, some of these slots are just gone. It went from five slots to four. I put the fourth him to Tarak in. Maybe the Opposition Agent should just be three Ophiomancers. If we're going to spend three mana, let's make sure we turn on Contamination. I don't actually know. I have no frame of reference for trying to keep Contamination in play, but I do like having a powerful BS donkey like Opposition Agent in my deck, and Liliana, just the way she controls a game, is undeniable. A little bit of the, the sampler platter of good black cards for three mana here. We may decide to focus them in later after the league and we have some game. Dothy Voidwalker also dovetails into this sideboard strategy of Helm of Obedience. We got four Leyline of the Voids here to go with three Helm of Obedience and three Dothy Voidwalker. That's seven ways to turn on Helm and then three Helms to kill your opponent with. If you're not familiar with this interaction, I played a white version of a Helm deck recently on the channel, earlier this week, I think, and X tap, target opponent mills a card, and then repeats this process until a creature or X cards go into their graveyard this way. With Dothy Voidwalker or Leyline of the Void, no cards ever go to the graveyard. For 5 mana, the 4 plus the 1 and activate, you exile your opponent's deck. That's the combo pivot here. If your opponent is a 
black deck, like I mentioned. And the type of decks that can function on just black mana and beat your contamination plan are going to be soft to Leyline of the Void. That is kind of a perfect circle. And it's nice that we could just hack the contaminations, put in four ley lines, and pivot onto this combo plan. That idea is from Swaggery. It came with the original list, and I think it's awesome. I'm going to roll with it. The rest of the sideboard is kind of a don't die to combo setup, which I don't know if we need to be this heavy on it. Like, maybe we want another answer to Merktide Regent in here. But untapping into your... Your Thoughtseize and him to Tarak help a lot, and these things do stop turn zero from happening. The other Dark Ritual decks, like, Contamination doesn't stop mana artifacts either, so Storm can just, like, shrug off Contamination. I guess it makes sense that Storm and Reanimate are your weak points, and most of the sideboard's dedicated to that, with some Plague Engineers for your Elves, your Death and Taxes, and that sort of stuff just laying around. I would say that the bottom eight cards of the sideboard here... And these three drops are the flexiest slots in the deck, but I like where they are right now. We're going to try it. I've never done this before. No frame of reference to know what's perfect, but we're going to try it out. This is kind of like Pox, but also kind of like Show and Tell or Doomsday. Weird deck building exercise here, and I'm excited about it. Swaggery, this is your Contamination Prison deck. Let's check it out. I am tragically on the draw in round one because I have turn one Oppo Agent. Or turn one Bitter Blossom, turn two Contamination. All of that gets worse on the draw than it is on the play, but I am going to keep this hand. Pretty exciting. Opponent's on a Malta six. Ancient Tomb, okay. Uh, this is probably not going to be a big opposition agent matchup. I'm going to play Bitter Blossom, pitching the Oppo agent. <laughs> Opponent said, oh man, in the chat in response to this Chrome Mox. Oh, never mind. They just realized it's me. They said, oh man, wow, you are Bosch and Roll. <laughs> I am indeed. Get ready for some bullshit. I think pitching the agent and casting Bitter Blossom is the way forward here. I just want this value engine online. If I have the chance to get the hooks in turn two and match one, game one, I am interested. If they are show and tell, I could... Put in the contamination. Whoa, that's funny. Oh my god. That would be so sick. Okay. Alright, let's see if they have a force of will. Maybe I'll draw Thoughtseize and soften them up. But an edict. Bummer. Okay, I could Dark Ritual the contamination and just like pull ahead of Days or Spell Pierce. But that also just two for once me for no reason if they have force of will. This looks like show and tell, though. This is a blue deck with Ancient Tomb in it. In, in that case, though, they're going to have to resolve show and tell to win the game, right? Oh, okay. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to Dark Ritual the Contamination. And that leaves up mana for Sudden Edict. Oh, shit, it resolved. Well, folks, let's see how this goes. Lands still have their abilities. They just tap for black. Uh, Ancient Tomb, and this isn't, like, Urborg that turns it into a swamp. So, like, the Ancient Tomb is still going to deal two to you, and then Contamination is going to slurp that two colorless into a black. You have to spend two life to tap for black. <laughs> we got the dot 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 in the chat. <laughs> this is so fucked up. Yeah, they fetched Volcanic Island, floated black, untapped their land, then said dot dot dot, should have read the card. Yeah, they said, uh, I've never seen that card, just started Legacy a week ago. Well, don't worry, most Legacy players haven't seen this card either. And I want to make sure that I stack my triggers that Bitter Blossom happens first, then I can sack the new fairy and attack with the old one, so I'm actually pushing damage. Important to note, I'm currently losing this game by one life point, so I'm going to have to come up with another way to attack my opponent at some point. I'm going to hit them with him to Drock, though. Just get that information, soften up their hand, see what's going on over there. All right, we saw Brainstorm Force Will hit the graveyard. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if that Force Will was in the hand last turn, <laughs> Contamination would have been a good target. 
okay, is there a creature that can both resolve and attack in the top 17 cards of my deck is the question that we're asking here. Trigger Bitter Blossom, trigger Contamination, my land drop. It's kind of a sweat. <laughs> it's, it's so silly. Okay, they draw go again, which means they have six spells in their hand. Okay, that's a creature. Let's see if they uh, have the foresight to slam Force of Will on that, if they have a second Force of Will, because I did just clear one with the, the him. Oh, yep, here's a Force of Will, but that's the one point that I was behind in the race. So now they're at 15 to my 16, and now I'm ahead anyway. That's a fun interaction. When you're playing a one-point game and you demand Force of Will, that's awesome. As long as I don't misstack my triggers here, I think we're okay. Or sack the wrong creature. There's that second contamination. Actively bad to put into play, because then I have to sack two creatures. It's not like Blood Moon or Back to Basics where doubling up could be nice. <laughs> oh, I'm having a good time right now. It's, it's like watching paint dry, but I'm enjoying it. I'm going to save that Thoughtseize. I'm not just going to fire off a Thoughtseize and go back behind in the race when I have them locked out anyway. I can use Thoughtseize to clear the way for a creature that will do make up the two life lost to Thoughtseize. If I even care. I also could just attack 13 more times and win the game. Dark Confidant. Ooh. Okay, uh, since we're playing so careful like fast and loose with our life totals anyway we're in such a tight grind i don't even want to cast this bob which is kind of what i mentioned in the the deck tech but seeing it live in front of me here is is extra painful okay there's a fetch land and contamination is just straight up lands it's not even non-basic lands it's every single land they crack that fetch they're another turn behind on the race or borg well that does let them Ancient Tomb, but I don't think they can use Black Mana anyway, whether it costs two life or not, so I'm going to jam the Urborg. That does make Scalding Tarn better. Like, it's a swamp either way, but now you can, now you don't have to crack it. I'm just trying to think of any card in Sneak and Show that works here in the main deck. Like, it has to be a free spell, because there's no... Black cards in your main deck. Oh, I guess you could cast Grizzlebrand with 8 mana. Okay, there is something. Alright, just tap that island for black. That doesn't work either. It's not Blood Moon. It's Contamination. Okay, they just tapped Ancient Tomb for 2 damage. Or untapped, realized they could do it for free, I think. Or realized that these are black cards anyway. And the sick thing is, even if they cast Grizzlebrand, I just have Double Sudden Edict in my hand. I'm ready. So ready. Other thoughts, sees. Just poking. They do keep hitting land drops. They're on their way up to Grizzlebrand. Sack my fairy again. We've seen this game before. And my swamp. And they just draw go. They're going to discard here. Discard at a ponder. Sack my fairy. Got another swamp. I honestly could not ask for a better showcase of this deck. Match one, game one. We just get the hooks in turn two and go coast to coast in a one point race with a single fairy token. This is awesome. This is peak Magic the Gathering. You may not like it, but this is what it looks like. I could have won this game a thousand years ago if I pitched Sudden Edict instead of Opposition Agent to my Chrome Mox, but I couldn't have known that in the opening hand. There's a Void Walker. Even if it gets countered, it's another point in the race. And I'm actually not going to spend the Thought Seasons. I just don't think they're worth it. They're not really doing anything for me here. Go ahead, force it. All right, it's in play. Now the game's just going to end very quickly. There is some temptation to Thought Seasons now that Void Walker's in play and cast myself an Emrakul or Grizzlebrand, but I'd rather just be careful with my life total. Ooh, they go to discard. What are you going to give me? Feed the beast. Feed the beast. Gave me a brainstorm. Okay. Back my fairy. Play my peat land. And I'm going to attack for four. Which feels like a million. It feels like I just cast Searing Wind or kicked in Urza's Rage <laughs> compared to what I've been doing for the rest of this game. 
Finally threw in the tower. Tower? Threw in the tower? Threw in the towel. Oh, baby. If nothing, if we don't win another game for the rest of this league, at least that happened. Okay, we're against Sneak and Joe, which on the draw is likely to be tough. Mindbreak Trap doesn't really do much against Sneak and Show. They're kind of a one or two spell in a turn type of fam. Yeah, show and tell, even if they show and tell, put in omniscience, cast Emrakul, is still only two spells. Like they would have to show and tell, put in omniscience, cast Ponder off omniscience to find Emrakul. Then Mindbreak Trap is live. I just don't like it. This might be a zero sideboard situation. Or, or if I Helm of Obedience. And they cast show and tell, I can exile their deck. But then I'd have to bring in the Leyline of the Void. And I don't think I have seven cuts here I want to make. Because Edict actually does answer their in-play things pretty well. I like everything that gets the contamination hooks in. Like, a few Amancer is kind of bad. But that's not seven cuts, that's one cut. And I like Dark Confidant in any situation where we're not one life point apart. Yeah, this might just be a zero sideboard situation. Like, that deck might... It, oh, uh, they were drawing to Lotus Petal that whole time. I faded. I, I dodged real good. Yeah, uh, Lotus Petal Show and Tell would have uh, dodged the contamination. Null Rod would be, like, part of a lock at, uh, against, like, a full lock with the contamination. Maybe I do want that. And, yeah, I'll just bring one in. Because I'm at 12 seconds left and have to make a decision. My opponent is being very friendly and chatting with me in the chat about how they're new to Legacy and asking for advice and stuff. <laughs> and I used up most of my sideboard time chatting with them instead of figuring out that Null Rod's actually really good and I could have easily died that game. This is an easy mulligan. Jadar is not going to beat Sneak and Show on its own. Want some discard spells? Okay, here we go. Thought Season to Bob is pretty great. Their deck might have Blood Moon in it, but I'm not going to bottom cast a Lockthwain for the upside. I thought Season to Bob beats on the life total, but Liliana beats on their, their game plan. Oh, baby. Feed me these Hymn to Tarox. Love that card so much. Alright, is this a Spell Pierce? Is it a Brainstorm? Are we hiding or are we interacting? Alright, good Spell Pierce. Still a one for one. That softens them up for my two-for-one next turn, if I get a next turn. If they just Ancient Tomb show and tell here, I am mono black. I did the thing that helps me with that. Very cool. Looks like we're getting another spell on the stack this game. I'm not going to play Urborg if I don't have to. I'll save that one for later. As we learned, one life point could be the difference in the game, so uh, letting them play the game without cracking their Scalding Tarn seems risky. A yeah, Brainstorm to hide the goods. And either this hymn's going to resolve, or in mean, days would set them back a land. A second spell pierce is like the best thing they could hope for, or a fluster storm. If they force, that's still two cards. But force could set up land show and tell. They have plenty of cards in hand to, to set up that line. Okay, we got the force of will, pitching impulse. All right. Impulse is interesting. That indicates a... Uh, an omniscience game plan to me. That's not a card that's usually in just like decks. Oh, here it comes. Are we dead? I'm going to put in Dark Confidant. There's one card left over there. Yep, Grizzlebrand is the best one it could have been. You can't put in Liliana off show and tell or else that would have been my choice. But Bob gives me twice as many looks at Sudden Edict. Yeah, they did a really good job with the tempo, fending off the Thoughties, fending off the Hymn to Troc, and then buying just enough room to operate. Okay, Bob, find me Sudden Edict. Just flip it. Face up. All right, it was not face up. They did just draw seven cards and can draw seven more. The Liliana seems risky. And, uh, Bitter Blossom's not winning this game either, but I'm going to go with Liliana. Start softening up the hand over there, wherever I can. And Sudden Edict next turn also. Defeats the, the Grizzle brand. So they're going to have so many cards. It might not matter. You ever just wish your opponent put Emrakul into play? Or Omniscience? I find myself in that position pretty often, in fact. Like, oh good, it's just Emrakul. There's a Ponder. 
You can take two hits from his grizzle brand. If Bob cooperates with me, that's four looks for sudden edict. Bob could also just cut a turn off that clock by himself. A show and tell here, a follow up show and tell, just jamming an Emrakul is pretty gross. That's the thing about Grizzle Brand, it never parties alone. I'm an 11, you're at 14, you can draw a 7 one more time. Alright, Bob, let's go. Sudden Edict. Urborg and Sudden Edict. Sudden Edict. Alright, Bitter Blossom. Shit. Okay, I'm gonna attack for my two. I think it's too late to put this Bitter Blossom into play. Like between the Bob, uh, like Grizzlebrand's gonna put me to four, Bitter Blossom to three. Yeah, I, I might just die to my Bob even if I find the Sudden Edict at this point. I'm gonna fire off another Hymn to Turok. Want to keep their hand soft as I can, even though Grizzlebrand is attacking. Brainstorm in response to him. And the him took Ottawara and Sneak Attack. Okay. Ottawara is good to know about. Not that I play counter spells. But like Lotus Petal, Ottawara, Bounce Contamination could unlock a whole game. Uh oh. We're going. We're, we're getting sneaky here. Put in a second Grizzlebrand. There was a Pittsburgh local once who borrowed Sneak and Show for a Legacy side event at a Grand Prix and uh, put Grizzlebrand into play and then excitedly just put another Grizzlebrand into play. It was pretty great. I watched it unfold in real time with horror from over his shoulder. My opponent knew better, though. Okay. Uh, what changes here? Uh, I can make room for the other Null Rod if I want the Contamination to actually be a hard lock. Discard spells are the most important thing going on. Sudden Edict is the second most important thing going on. Dark Confidant was really good that game. Do I need Chrome Mox? Am I built for speed right now? I guess Chrome Moxing out a Bob or Void Walker on turn one. Or Accelerating Liliana even one turn. Yeah, okay. I do like all of that. And I might actually cut a Contamination. Does that make sense? Like between... Like just... Drop into mono black discard control and like if I draw two contaminations, that could be the end of the game for me. Okay, I'm going in like this. I think this makes sense. Just give me that same hand that I had last game, but now I'm on the play where Spell Pierce doesn't break it up. That was pretty sick though. They fended off Thoughtseize him to Tarak Liliana. On the play, this is not a capable hand. Mulligan. Okay, here's that uh that turn one. Off Chrome Mox, we were talking about. I have to bottom Null Rod if I keep this hand, pitch Bitter Blossom, and then just hope anything happens after that. I could also just bottom the Chrome Mox, play slower. I don't think I like that though. I'm going to keep this and bottom the Null Rod. Null Rod's pretty bad without help from Contamination. Yeah, this is tough, pitching the Bitter Blossom, but I think firing off this Hymn to Tarak before Spell Pierce can mess with it makes sense. Bitter Blossom's out. Hold on to the Sudden Edict. Hope we get into a scrappy little one-card payoff game again. Force of Will and Ottawa are into the graveyard. Yeah, I need a follow-up. I need, like, a, an Opposition Agent or Bob or something ASAP. Oh, I'll take a Wasteland field. Two of Wasteland, finding a target. Good shit. And my Hymn to Turok did hit a land from their hand. Okay. The game goes on. Ancient Tomb. All right. Come on, deck. Uh, Dark Ritual. A little late for that. There was a version of this deck that considered playing Lolth Spider Queen, but uh, I couldn't find room for her. It would have been exciting, though. Turns out there are distressingly few... Planeswalkers in mono black that just put tokens into play. I'm going to fire off the Thoughtseize now. Like, I'm on defense. I would love to. I'm just going to pay for this Fluster Storm. Like, I would love to uh, save my Thoughtseize to protect something better, but I'm on stay alive mode right now. Pay for these Flusters. Opponent said oops in the chat. Yep, legacy lesson. That's not a hard counter. Two sneaks, geez. I can't get both of them. Um, I can take the Impulse. I think that's the best card in the hand, because Impulse 
denies them the the dig for the land for sneak. It also takes your blue card for force. And we know they're missing both show and tell and monster right now. Did not draw a land. Sudden Edict can fend off Sneak Attack for a little bit, but Sneak Attack is a much scarier thing to see in their hand than Show and Tell when I'm hiding behind Sudden Edict, because the second monster is going to get me. Using the Yorborg to save two life there. Good stuff for you. Bad stuff for me. Another Swamp. Oh no. Yeah, this is what I was worried about. Like, if one of these three lands I've drawn was like Dark Confidant, we'd be doing great. But a card, a deck with no selection is what it is. Oh, please don't draw seven right away. Pass priority. Pass priority. Fuck. All right. That sucks. Oh, that hurts so bad. Yeah, I'm just going to Edict now. Even though they still have a land drop, they can draw. They're going to draw seven here, which, you know, coming up with monster plus red source probably is not going to be hard. It was smart to draw seven right away, though. Once again, Grizzlebrand, much better than Emrakul. Okay, we're just fetching for red here. Am I about to get annihilated? Now I'd rather see Grizzlebrand than Emrakul. All right, cool. GG's. This is a tough matchup, and they we, we got to do the insane thing game one uh, because they didn't read the card and discarded Force of Will like the turn later and Spell Pierce. But Sneak Attack, Show and Tell is a deck that can juke what we're doing. The Having Sneak Attack this game instead of Show and Tell was specifically beat the sudden edict having two sneak attacks specifically beat the thoughtsies this lined up really well for them ggs on to the next one for the absolute best magic the gathering apparel on the market check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop and be sure to use the code boss and roll for 10 percent off when you check out i'm on the play in round two with a thoughtsies and then bitter blossom or jadar hand i'll keep this one needs some follow-up, but uh, maybe it's a matchup where Thoughtseize Bitter Blossom is just GG. I'm sure my opponent's going to be really happy that I follow up Dark Ritual Thoughtseize with Bitter Blossom and not Entomb Reanimate, though. Ooh, okay. We are up against 8 cast. They have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, they're not quite at Kappa. Kappa's a problem if it happens, though. Kappa's the only real card in this hand. Um... Mox Opal does dodge Contamination, which I don't have. I can Wasteland my opponent next turn. If they Welding Jar, they can protect Seed of the Synod, but then they don't have Welding Jar. Maybe I just take Opal. One, two, three. Yeah, Opal. I'm going to take the Opal. That might be risky, but I'm here for it. Can't live in fear. Here's my Bitter Blossom. You're welcome. Which, by the way, Ottawara can bounce. Not now, but like, it's a, it's a line someday. A Wasteland on Seed of the Synod would at least knock this artifact out of play. Make Thoughtcast and Kappa both worse. Or I could just wait for the Ottawara to come into play. Let's see, they're probably going to cast Chalice next turn, and then I get a real Wasteland. Yeah, I think that's better, and I'm going to play Jadar this turn. Maybe my zombies will be attacking. The decayed zombies. This is like an extra two power of return. That's pretty sick. Just mono black tokens. Versus 8 cast. One of the premier legacy decks that exist. Okay. Glad I held onto Wasteland now. They can Chalice. I don't super care about that. Sure. You know, I have like Thoughtseize on my deck. Oh, they found an Opal. Tilt. Tilt, tilt, tilt. One, two, three, four, and they get their thought cast. God! All my plans. Okay, that sucks. Also, Urza Saga can still make constructs even under contamination. This Kappa is pretty harsh. Castle Lockthwain. I think I gotta waste the Saga though. And I'm just gonna attack for four and hope that my measly beats can get over the finish line. My zombie will die at the end of combat. And then in the end step, Jadar makes a new zombie. Because that's how Jadar works. You get one every turn. If you don't have one already, so you're incentivized to use the one you have. Follow up saga is annoying, but at least we slowed down the first one. But Kappa can come into play right now. 
And then the race is on. Race I am not favored in. Time to rip Sudden Edict. So they untapped all their lands. Reconsidering. That's weird. Oh, Thought Monitor. Yeah, that's much better. You can probably still cast Kappa this turn, and you get a 2-2 two -two and draw two cards. <laughs> oh no, fake Legacy deck versus real Legacy deck. It's, it looks pretty rough, doesn't it? Alright, now they have the Kappa also. And a 2-2, two -two, a flyer that can tangle with my tokens. And they're mitigated against Sudden Edict. All of these things are bad for me. I'm going to attack, because it's going to die and get replaced anyway. Yep, they're not fooled. I have no way out of this game. I'm like, not even pretending. Uh, contamination too late. They're already ahead on board. Yeah, I'm going to concede. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Shit. That was really good. And obviously, I could have taken something different with the Thoughtseize. I could have just taken the Kappa. But with the Wasteland and the the way that their hand looked, I felt pretty good going after Opal. I don't know. Maybe it's just wrong. I believe it. Okay. Uh, Plague Engineer and Null Rod are good here. I could go... No, I'm not going to go into Leyline Helm because I'm just boarding in Null Rods. Cards that are worse. I like the discard. I like the Edict. Uh, they have a lot of artifact mana. Contamination might just not be the strat. At which point I'm just like a really bad black control tech. Oh no. Um, I guess the Null Rods do back up the Contaminations pretty well. Uh, but this deck doesn't do a lot of searching. It's like the Urza Saga trigger at the end. They don't even have fetch lands. That's the only searching they do. Which is not nothing, but it's also not, like, good. Do I want to Chrome Mox out a Null Rod? Am I that kind of gamer? I also have no real answer to Chalice. Maybe I should shave a Dark Ritual... To sort of mitigate against Chalice, because they can't really remove it, but I can ignore it pretty well. Recontamination's still in. The Null Rods to support them. I do have creature removal. Alright, I'm going to try it like this. I got the Null Rod. Uh, it's not really backed up by anything, but I am going to keep a hand with Null Rod in it, for sure. Which is tough against the deck that might have eight forces in it. Right, play in my swamp. This hand might look a little anemic, but that's what happens when you board out your dark rituals. There's a world where I just try to set up contamination here. If I play Bitter Blossom contamination or just run out Void Walker, I might be able to sniff out a Force of Will. I think I am going to hold off on the Null Rod. Like they might just pop off next turn, but this deck isn't huge on popping off in general. That's like a mid-game kind of thing that they do. And if they cast Emery here, I'm going to be glad I have the Voidwalker. Okay. Now I'm going to draw Dark Ritual or Thoughtseize. Okay. We dodged my Cruel Fate. I'm going to attack with Voidwalker, and I could play Ophiomancer, but we're starting to get to the point where there could be a critical mass of artifacts, but they didn't really run them out either. Psy could be a reason they didn't run them out. Ophiomancer does set up Contamination. I think Null Rod's the play, though. It's going to be a Hymn to Turok, if not a Null Rod. Like, I'll get two cards out of their hand. Cool, we're in there. Yeah! Alright, that looks good. Liliana, okay. She is normally good, but I'm going to go for Ophiomancer this turn. And I like the Mancer better, because it actually attacks for damage faster than Bitter Blossom. It spends all my mana. There is like a world where I draw a land and I go Bitter Blossom and hold up Sudden Edict in the same turn. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, there's still a zero drop away from Kappa Cannoneer. Cool. All right, all of this has happened. I get to attack with my creatures and then play Contamination and see if we're done. Because a zero drop does not cast Kappa if your island only taps for black. All right, we're in there with that. Can't activate Mox Opal or Lotus Petal. Islands tap for black. <laughs> they just tap their island, got a black in the pool, and untapped it. Does anyone read this card? Does anyone even look at it? They're just like, okay, resolves. 
Nice. Okay. A nice little contamination win on the back of Nullrod against uh, a pretty slow start from the opponent, honestly. Now I'm having a real crisis of conscience, which is like, do I need to combo kill this opponent? Like, can I reasonably beat eight casts on the play after I boarded out half my dark rituals? Like, I could just go in for Leyline three helm and race towards the end. That is a way to cheese an overwhelming board state. I could just get off contamination. Now they've seen it, so they know that's there. I mean, Null Rod's awkward because it overlaps with Helm. But Null Rod also... Like, if Null Rod's in play, I'm probably doing okay. Plague Engineer on Thopter is, like, a thing I can do. Oh, if Contamination's out of the deck, Jadar is also out of the deck, because that card is not good. Um, and then Ophiomancer, also not good without Plague Engineer. I still want my thought seizes to soften up the opponent. On the draw, Dark Ritual is even worse. Okay, the Null Rod Helm friction is non-zero. But I think I like having the option to just delete my opponent if I need to in this awful matchup. Okay, I have a Void Walker and a Helm. Not a lot going on here, but I am going to keep. The Sudden Edict, like this hand doesn't care about Emery, or it doesn't care about Chalice. I can beat an Emery. I can beat a Psy. I can beat a Kappa. I am going to need to hit some land drops, though. If they don't put a creature into play that I care about. All right, there's Ancient Tomb. That makes sense. Ox Opal, okay. All right, come on, Swamp. Uh-oh. All right, missing land drops, not where I want to be. My options here include just Edicting this end step creature, which I think I'm supposed to do. Like I just want to survive longer. Let's clear that out. They get another construct out of this. Lotus Petal, another Saga. Okay. Um, tough crowd. Crucible of Worlds. All right. I don't really care about that. Land? Fuck. All right. I got bad news for the team here. I'm going to play Dark Confidant just because I have to to uh, try to recover this game. So I'm going to take a lot of damage from it. Yeah, the Crucible is kind of awkward when I boarded into this seven ley line strat. I just don't have one. They main phase the construct. They're going to bash for four, maybe more if they have more artifacts to play, which is probably pretty likely. Cast Thought Cast. That's a good one. Didn't come up with any more artifacts, which in a way is extra terrifying because that means probably they're just sitting on Force of Wheels over there. I could Liliana N minus try to buy some more time. I am very likely just dead in the near future. I think I want to try to get this Liliana in and soak up a construct or a force of will. Because like it takes five mana to helm anyway. I'd have to top deck Dark Ritual or Crow Mox to play and activate Helm next turn. If I play Voidwalker this turn, like I'm not even not even there. But there is Emery getting exiled. Three, four, five, six. Dark Ritual doesn't even get me there. If I, uh, if my Bob flips Curl Mox and I draw Dark Ritual, I can win next turn. And they don't have another force. This deck could play Ensnaring Bridge. It's a card I considered. Uh, did not end up making room for it. Seven, <laughs> 14. Okay, so I now have to chump block the whichever construct is not holding Shadow Spear. And then I'm on no outs. Yeah, much like the, the show and tell deck, this is a deck with a crazy fast clock and force of will. So just finding room to to smear me. Even though, even if I did execute, like I missed a land drop this game. And, but even if I did execute on a combo, they still had force of will for it. And I drew the dark ritual, of course I did. Punishing. Three, four, five, six. Uh, I'll show them how close they came. Or they can show me Force of Will. Either one. Dark Ritual. Helm of Obedience. Okay, they had the Force. I feel better about that. 
<laughs> GG. We made a run out of it. On to the next one. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards. And you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the draw in round three against none other than Luis Scott Vargas, who is not normally kicking around the legacy cues. I imagine this is for some sort of content, but I'm going to keep my hand. It's got Dark Ritual. We got some upside. Let's see if this is some fun thing for a video. Are we just, is it Delvering? Street Wraith. Okay. Probably Death Shadow. Though I guess Doomsday also checks these boxes. I think I'm pretty even up with Luis in the Moto Qs when we meet each other. I know I beat him once in Old Extended and once in Vintage on the channel, and he's probably gotten me a couple times. We've never played in person. I don't keep a scoreboard or anything. It's just funny how uh, you remember when you beat someone like Luis. It also took him two minutes to keep a hand, and now this uh, fetch land's been on the stack for 20, 30 seconds, so I imagine he is streaming and just goofing around with the chat over there or whatever. There's probably a VOD of his side of the video somewhere. All right, we got a Watery Grave in play and a Ponder. It only took four and a half minutes to do. <laughs> I'm glad I don't edit these things by hand, my goodness. Did not shuffle the Ponder. All right, come on, Thoughtseize. Oh, backup Contamination. Pretty cool. I could go for Liliana right now. Uh, there, Death Shadow is a Daze and Force of Will deck. Yeah, I think just trying to power out a 3-drop now, and then I can use two men on Voidwalker next turn. Makes some sense. There's Liliana. Yep, Daze, that's fine. I could have played around that by playing the 2-drop instead, but I think just using all my mana and trying to make something happen here was the way to go. And setting him back a land isn't that bad either. Another Ponder. Another No Shuffle. All right, just going to keep tapping out into Daze here. Yep, got me again. It's all right. It's all a distraction working towards this contamination. Thoughtseize is no longer good, and it is a discard deck. Death Shadow's pretty good. That's a lock, Thwain. That hurts. I run out of gas. Now five cards in hand, ready to start attacking. Yeah, this would be a great situation to have Sudden Edict, which of course I do not. Or Meg Angler. All right, we're going to die quick here. Oh, you sm you wise guy. Wise guy deck. All right. Right on time with that one. Better than nothing. I mean, I'll take it. Not mad. But Luis has played Magic once or twice before. He's going to know this was my top deck, and my hand before the straw could not answer a creature. Another Edict or a Liliana. Like, another Edict would be great. He's clearly missing land drops over there. Ah, oh, sick. Uh, if he has Force of Will, he's going to get me, but otherwise Ophiomancer is pretty fucked up against Gurmag Angler. Uh, the Force of Will. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> uh, that would have been the, the screenshot of a lifetime. All right, missed his last land drop. Did not play another creature. Oh, there's another creature. Now we're dead. Uh, yeah, okay. I am deceased. Yeah, the double days was rough. I could have played around it by dark ritualing out Dothy Voidwalker, but then my hand wasn't really doing anything for several turns, and Dothy Voidwalker doesn't beat Death Shadow on its own. So, yeah, not a fan. Okay. Plague Engineer is coming in. It can just trade with a creature. I, I like that about it. Uh, he is a black deck, but he's also a blue deck. So Contamination might be worse than advertised, but I think Bitter Blossom and... Uh, Ophiomancer just line up well against what, what's going on. Decayed zombies can't block, so uh, Jadar is worse. Dark Ritual and Chrome Mox, I think those are important to, to punch through the dazes and stuff. Not really into Ley Line. And maybe I just go down to two Contamination and try to just play a more normal removal based game, because like the deck with Sudden Edict Liliana and Ophiomancer. Uh, could just like turtle up against the black deck trying to connect with a big creature. Yeah, I'm gonna go for this. On the play in game two with a much better hand, I can turn one, two spells if I wanna just come out of the gates blazing. 
I could pitch Dark Confidant to stick Bitter Blossom or vice versa. I'm definitely going to keep this. I'm going to lead on Chrome Mox, see if he's going to force it. All right, I'm going to exile Bitter Blossom, I think. I think Liliana and Bob are the payoffs here. Dark Ritual. Him to Turok. Uh, Court of Cunning in the Graveyard. Dark Confidant resolves. All right, here we go. One card in hand, it's a Liliana. Please don't fatal push me. All right, it'll land off Bob. Life is good. I can play around days, so I will. We'll brainstorm action. All right, no problem hitting land drops after the hymn connected. It's all right, Bob's getting a second trigger here. Keep it running. Oh, there's a backup Liliana. Now the first one's not so bad. I can play around days here. And I hope it does get forced because I have a backup. Giving him Urborg might be a little wonky. All right, we're both going to discard, and I'm going to dump the backup Liliana. I think a second Bob is better than a second Liliana. Discarding him to Tarak over there. I mean, these attacks might be risky. Like, I'm kind of setting, queuing him up for Death Shadow, but I can answer the first one. Plague Engineer. Well, that's good. Lily can clear that, and then I play the backup Bob. Oh, God. Well, don't have a second Plague Engineer, please. Our Confidant. I hope this gets forced. Now I have to decide if I want to feed the Daze Machine again, or just not do that. Alright, I'm getting after it. Go ahead, Daze me. I'm in, like, tap out Liliana mode anyway. Just don't have a second Plague Engineer. How about that? Okay, it resolved. <laughs> Am I getting my Engineer plagued? Right, cracking a fetch. That puts you into Death Shadow range. Cycling Street Wraith does the same. Just having the world's biggest Death Shadow right now. And racing. Or several of them, probably. Okay, several of them. Is it all three? Or is this Gurmag Angler? How are we finishing this party off? We're tight reaching high rate. Yeah, that's a lot of, a lot of heat in the kitchen. Okay, Bob, give me some sudden edicts. Plague Engineer, Wasteland, and Wasteland. Uh, that's not really what I was looking for. Liliana, get rid of one of these creatures. Plague Engineer, I'm going to name Dragon. Because I'm going to trade with Death Shadow anyway. Just want to save some life points on the Dragon. And I'm going to just start constricting the, the lands as well. Yeah, just Death Touch Creature is really more important than Plague Engineer on the board. Oh no, did you draw Court of Cunning? Oh, a second Merc Tide Regent, perfect. The 2-2. Two -two. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably just going to die. Dark Confidant, Voidwalker, another Plague Engineer. Yeah, just literally dead. Uh, four, five, six. Uh, I can name Dragon again. One, two, three, four. All right. Um, Wasteland. Play the Voidwalker. Plague Engineer. Name Dragon again. I'm going to attack with my Bobs. Uh, you have to block if I attack with Plague Engineer. Uh, if I attack with everything, Plague Engineer can block. Um, the Shadow gets huge. Oh, if you trade with this, I'm just dead. For the dragons. Yeah, so the Dark Confidants are getting in. All right, I'm at one. I need to fade three times with Bob. Or twice. Just two lands on top of the deck. Let's go. I'm at one. <laughs> All right, two lands. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Two lands. First Bob trigger. Dead instantly. Tilt, 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 tilt. Yeah, the uh, deploying three giant creatures in a single turn cycle line was pretty strong. GG's. Yeah, those bobs were not going to hold me up. Okay, another rough one. And this was a deck that Contamination didn't shut down and also was e too efficient to handle to uh, make the helm a good plan. So that's a tough squeeze. Though getting Merc Tided makes me... I kind of wish I had more Grievous Hate, but we couldn't know. On to the next one. On the play in round four, I think I can do better. I'm going to mulligan. All right, yeah, there we go. The old thought sees him to drop Liliana. The perfect curve. I will keep this. And exactly three lands to do it all. Let's see if this is going to work. Sees you. Oh, God, it's bugging this deck again. How? How? This deck isn't even good. Okay, uh, Thoughtseize collapses my hand, so I have to take that. 
Days also collapses my hand. All right. Suddenly in trouble. Who let people play these efficient days decks in the queues when I'm trying to resolve three drops? This is an outrage. Cycling the Wraith. There's the Delta. Uh-oh. You find Thoughtsies. Did this happen? Or is it Ponder? Okay. Rear Dane's fine. Deal. Bottomed both. Okay. Homie's looking for a land. If you're already looking for a land, I don't really want to him you, but because that gives you a land drop off the days. But I am also have a handful of three drops. Oh, wait, wait. I can just him next turn. Chill, chill, man. You're missing land drops, not me. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was about to fire off this him to try to resolve a three drop. But I think that just playing around the days is better than playing into it to sniff it out. There's Brainstorm. Right, this gives myself two more draw steps to hit a land, and then I can just play the game ignoring days. Right, they found their land. Cycled Street Wraith, working through the Brainstorm cards. And Ponder. Okay. Chose to shuffle. All right. Now let's see him to Turok win this thing for me. How about that? They have six cards in their hand. I don't want to see the Snuff Out go to the graveyard here. I want you to have Snuff Out in the mix. Although, that was probably the card shuffled away with Brainstorm against Mono Black. Uh, Days and Flooded Strand hit the graveyard. I'm glad to see the Days go. That one I was actually worried about. They can Merc Tide this turn. But if they do, Liliana can slide in. If the Merc Tide is backed by any Counterspell, I'm fucked. My opponent has correctly identified that they probably shouldn't just jam Merc Tide against the Mono Black deck. Gonna be looking for a discard spell first. They chose not to shuffle. That sucks. Probably just looking for that land. D shad. Oh, big D over there. <laughs> That's what we call that one. Okay, I'm gonna dark ritual out Liliana. This plays around days and lets me play Dark Confidant next turn. Or this turn. Alright, force pitching the Merc Tide. That's fine. And then I get to slide this Bob in. Okay, cool. Uh, Ophiomancer, if it's still in my hand next turn, can just shut down Death Shadow forever. But the race is on. Oh, force pitching Murktide was tight. I was really worried about the Murktide. Like, I was worried Liliana would just resolve. I killed Death Shadow, they play Murktide, and just beat me to death over two turns. Ignoring the Liliana. But we cleared it anyway. Alright, just passing the turn. Two cards in hand. Land off the Bob. I'd love to see it. I'd also love to see Thoughtseize. I'm not greedy. Okay. Uh, I'm going to see if Ophiomancer resolves before I attack with Bob. I don't want to make Death Shadow too big if I don't have a plan to deal with it. Rest down. Okay, so I don't get a snake this turn. Oh, but I get a snake in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's in their upkeep. I don't care. Whatever. Take two. <laughs> okay, so Dress Down will die in the end step. Uh, I guess this would turn on Fatal Push, but I get a snake in your upkeep anyway. Yeah, it's upkeep, not in step. So we're still in snake down. They were just trying to rip a counter spell, I guess. Or turn on a, a YOLO Fatal Push. If you look at my opponent's clock, this Ophiomancer trigger has been on the stack for a very long time. I wonder what's going on over there. Are they just contemplating their life choices? Am I getting roped? Did they just take a lap around the house to cool off? I don't know what's going on. Okay, we're back. Cycle Straight Wraith. Brainstorm. And Fatal Push does push an attack through for the turn. Fatal Push plus Dress Down. That is a lot of... Damage that I have to consider blocking. Sland. Right, I don't really care about that. Alright, Street Wraith is down to four life. And they're just conceding to the Ophiomancer. Ophiomancer claims a victory in Legacy, fair and square. We find ourselves in an interesting position here because Leyline is not that good against their deck. We did see Gurmag Angler. But I don't think Contamination is, like, really good at all. Just the number of things I need to get in position. I'm just going to lay this out and see what it looks like. Uh, without Contamination, Jadar's bad. Ophiomancer is still good. This is still one cut just to get this in, and that's not even talking about the Plague Engineers yet, so I need four cuts to make this 
this setup work? Like, I'd probably be looking at cutting Dark Rituals and just trying to play more fairly against this deck. If I were going to do this, like, that is a 60-card switch, just a 10-card a sideboard plan. Leyline is very bad, though. Uh, if it's not in your opening hand, you never want to draw it. You can pitch it to Chromox, discard it to Liliana, so it's not, like, completely worthless. And this deck can cast it, given enough time. I'm going to try this for science. Like, Murktide Region is the scariest thing their deck does, and this does start to check that box. Okay, and sometimes you just have the whole combo in your opening hand. This hand is land light, but I'm going to roll it with it. I even have the Chrome Mox for when I inevitably top deck Leyline of the Void on my first draw step. Sudden Edict is one of the best cards in the matchup, so let's try it. More than one third of the cards in my deck are lands, so... Uh, this hand is highly susceptible to Thoughtseize on Chrome Mox, but I'm, I'm still going to run it. I think Thoughtseize is probably better taking Sudden Edict, even if it could take the Chrome Mox, just based on the play patterns. Like, Leyline bricks the Delve creatures, and Edict answers the first Shadow, and that's like all the creatures in the deck, unless we start hardcasting Tree Wraiths, which I guess could happen. Wow, opponent is not interested. A turn zero win, and we have dodged the 05. We are playing for an actual prize in the final round, recovering from our 03 start. Let's do it. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop and be sure to use the code Boston Roll for 10% off when you check out. I'm on the draw in the final round with another tragic turn one opposition agent hand on the draw. But this hand does Dark Ritual into him and Bob, or Dark Ritual Oppo agent and then play Bob on the following turn. I'm going to keep the hand. Opponent said, oh no, good luck smashing me. Come on, heavy. <laughs> Fans of the channel, you know that I might have something like this in the chamber as, just as well as I might have like Delver or whatever. Fake decks and real decks. What I do around here. Ponder did not shuffle. Oh shit! There it is. Okay. Um, I was about to start bemoaning that, like, I leave a mana unspent if I dark ritual, and play him to Turok, but I don't want to lead on Oppo Agent, and I also leave a mana unspent if I don't tap my land this turn and dark ritual to cast two spells next turn. But now, I don't have to choose. I'm going to Dark Ritual him to Turok. I'm followed up with Chrome Mox, Dark Confidant. Him to Turok. Sing the song of the people. Force of Will hit the bin. Like that. I'm going to pitch Contamination. I'm like nowhere near that being a, a playable card. Unfortunately, my opponent appears to be some sort of flu deck where I could just follow this up with land swords of plowshares and make a joke out of me but reordain okay is this death shadow for the third time in a row i'm gonna freak out or either that or it's a combo deck hot bottom what's the verdict on that swamp okay it's a combo deck i hope this opposition agent goes to the house hasn't done anything yet in this league all right my hand is two pair gonna attack and oppo my opponent hopefully hit a doomsday here if it is Doomsday, they're a Days deck, which is kind of rough. That Strix is annoying. I should have played Oppo in response to Strix. Now I'm just sitting here like a chump, because if I play, they fetch Castle Lock Thwain. I think I'm just going to chill. I'm going to try to catch this, uh, this fetch land when they go for it. I can force the issue with Wasteland, but I don't know if I'm ready to make that commitment. Okay. I'd rather play around days if they let me. Rubland. Okay. Uh, opposition agent. Let's party. Zizu. Are we in? Dan it nah. Dan it nah. Dun 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 dun. I rarely ever get the opportunity to actually do anything with opposition agent, and I'm very excited. I'm gonna waste in the end step. Like if they have anything, I want to see it now. Normally, I tell you, just untap, see what happens, but them having man in my draw set might actually affect the game. M to Tarak, your three-card hand. Make it a one-card hand. 
Two doomsdays over there. Sad to hear it. Oh, I should have played this instead of my uh, land from hand. That didn't make any sense. I forgot I had it. I got so excited. All right, Bitter B, get in there. We need to start tangling with this Baleful Strix. I'm just going to sit on my generating creatures here, value generating objects. Another Flooded Strand. Sorry. Okay, we're going to Bitter Blossom first, then Bob. I don't think that matters. Oh, Bob hit a land. Good news. Uh, am I going to lock Thwain, or do I want to... Oh, I already have a lock Thwain in play. Yeah, I'm just going to cash out this land that I know is over here. I could attack, offer a trade with the Strix, and then catch it with the second Oppo Agent. That's so fucking funny. Uh, I'm going to attack with both of these creatures. I think they're going to respect Oppo Agent more, but it doesn't matter. Okay, that happens. Now I'm going to Thought Seize, check this last card, and that's going to make sure Oppo Agent comes through. Your Stoneforge Mystic. Oh, I almost wish I let you have that. This is the... <laughs> get you once, get you twice. Damn it, no. Nobody expects the second opposition agent. Yeah, so, like, in all seriousness, there is a argument that I just saw two Doomsdays in Stoneforge Mystic. Why would I trade my opposition agent with for your Baleful Strix if I didn't have another one? Like, it's a, you're able to read that, but also, like, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> like, you got to... You got to try to play the game, right? You're hellbent with no ability to do anything. Like, you're going to cast your spells. So uh, it's not like they had an opportunity to play around it. So pretty tight. Okay. Uh, Null Rod hits the uh, Lotus Petals and LEDs that Doomsday might have. And it hits the equipments that the Stoneforge might have. I'm not sure that's how I want to play the game, though. Like, do I even have a sideboard here? Mindbreak Trap gives me some game against Doomsday, but Thought sees him to Tarak and Opposition Agent are pretty fucked up there as well. I feel like I don't want Contamination against the deck trying to cast a Black 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 card, though they might be off the Black 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 card now that they've seen this, and I kind of expect a fair deck now. Plague Engineer can name Monk. Sometimes they have Mentor, but if they have... Stoneforge, that usually means they don't have Mentor. It's like one white creature or the other a lot of the time. Maybe I'm just submitting my main deck 60 again. I think that plays. Yeah, I'm just going back in until they show me something different. Okay, uh, I like this against both halves of the deck. I get to Thought Seize into him. Have a card advantage engine to follow up with. Nullrod would have hit that too, but I'm not really going to... I still don't think that's how I want to approach the game. Oh, if they turn one me, though. Mindbreak Trap. I needed you. Okay, no, that's not what happened. They're, they just bobbled themselves and then didn't like the card. I like that outcome. Ophiomancer. Known Doomsday Slayer, Ophiomancer. It's kind of funny because we I talked a lot in the deck tech about how to balance out your three drop slots. Ooh, a force pitching force on Thoughtseize. My goodness. This opponent's going for it turn two, or their hand just really doesn't function without thought without a a card in it. Are we all in on a Stoneforge Mystic? I think we are. Okay. I have the sudden eater for that one. Anyway, finishing my thought. Uh talking about spreading around the the three drops. Opposition agent much better in this matchup, but we played against Death Shadow twice in this league, where Ophiomancer is just the cat's ass. So spreading him out. And we just like through the the grace of the the shuffler gods, drew one of each for whatever we need in any given spot. And clearing the the mystic there is a, a pretty easy choice. Let's see, do we have Teferi Time Raveler? That one would be annoying. Oh, Baleful Strix, sure. Let's see what happens here. Voidwalker. I kind of want to soften up their hand before I move forward with anything else. Though I have a chance to play a 3-drop now, and then 2-2-drops two, two next turn. Oh, I have 2-2-drops two, two in my hand anyway. Yeah, I can him now, and then still cast 2-2-drops two, two if I draw the land next turn. We hit Tundra and Prismatic Ending, so that Cauldra is rotting in the hand. Miles away from casting a Doomsday here. Oh no, that was the best draw. My opposition agent utterly punished. Strix is getting in. 
batter skull. Okay. I can cast my two cards this turn, but they are worse than they were a moment ago. It's going to be hard to recoup this one now. That second stone forge was brutal. That's the one card I didn't want them to draw. Yeah, now Cauldra is going to complete me. I mean, my out here is like making them discard a white removal spell and then plowing the Cauldra. But I'm under a quick clock. Oh, I can hit the Batter Skull. All right, him to Turok. Show me what we're working with. Did I hit a plow? I did hit a prismatic ending. Oh my god. Uh, I did not hit the Batter Skull though. Let's see. Um, oh, you cast it without casting its mana cost. Oh, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter because I'm targeting a token. Oh my god. Fuck you, pay me. All right. Yeah. <laughs> hit a zero drop with this uh, pilfered. Yeah, make, I'm just going to make sure I don't mess this up. Non-land permanent, if its mana value is equal to or less than the number of colored mana. Yeah. Okay. Get rid of that. That was fortunate. There's a batter skull over there. Ophiomancer can waste a bunch of time against that. <laughs> yes. I mean, that batter skull in hand is rough uh, over the underground sea, but we're going to have to deal with this somehow. And someday they'll get seven mana and just equip that cauldron to something else. And they're going to have so much life in the meantime. Oh, top, top the preordain. Don't like that. And it's B skull time. Oh, okay. There's the skull. I could just die to my Bob this game. That's very possible, even likely to occur. Him to Turok. What did I hit? Predict. I guess I'm just passing the turn here. I'm sandbagging the Opoage and I'm going to try to spike. I'll cast it in the end step if they don't do anything. Top topping the preordained, setting up Predict. They may have just drawn a card they actively didn't want. Like they were planning to upkeep Predict it away and draw two cards. That would be a great outcome for, for my life here. I'm going to agent in the end step, just get my mana spent. This Bob's becoming a problem. Oh, good, a second one. I'm going to him them again, see what card they kept on top. Allowing my oppo agent, sure. I'm not dead to Bob yet. I might actually play out the other. Like, I, I need to do something dramatic this game, and my opponent is ahead on board, and we're both hellbent. Like, I need to start ripping here. My curve is pretty low in general, and maybe I'll die to Bob. Maybe I'll just draw three cards for free, and that's what occurred that time. Now, this castle locked Wayne got pretty awkward. Still going to play it. Can't attack with my snake. Ophiomancer doesn't have death touch itself. All right, we're hanging out here. I can lose three life to lock Thwain. I think with the two Bobs, I need to... That's probably my line. I have enough ways to lose life and draw cards. I would have paid one life for a card, but not three. Okay, Bob triggers. Let's go. Another land. Another Bob. And a Thoughtseize. Okay. Literally, my life is pain. I'm going to attack with my Bobs. Probably should have been doing this. Okay, do I think I can survive five life points, three Bob flips? I'm going to try it. <laughs> this is what this game has become. Okay, five life remains. Let's just flip three lands, draw four cards for free. Easy game, right? First Bob. Uh-oh, I'm at three. I'm at three. I'm at dead. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they, that second stone forge just stabilized really well, and my, my answers were not in the deck. My uh, plague engineers sweeping up the baleful strix and punching through the batter skull. Okay, uh, I think... I might want to combo this opponent. Like, that's an eject button if they're on the, the Stoneforge plan. Do I just do that huge 10-card plan that I did in the previous round? I mean, Plague Engineer isn't, like, the best. It names Bird and clears out Baleful Strixes, and it has Death Touch. Those things are good. But I care less about Baleful Strix if I have a, a Yeet button in Helm of Obedience. Dark, I think Dark Ritual is better than Chromox in this matchup. Because the, the power of Opposition Agent is undeniable. I think I just want my own combo out here. And the speed does matter, so I'm not quite as interested in going off Dark Rituals as I was the other time I tried this. Nullrod, we've seen Mishra's Bobble now as well. 
but I still don't think Null Rod is good. They didn't do a lot of moving their equipment around. They just sort of put them into play, and the creature mode was good enough. I am pretty interested in Plague Engineer, though. Is it better than Bitter Blossom? To get two engineers in over two of the Bitter Blossoms. Like, Bob and Bitter Blossom asking this deck to deal do both of those things is kind of a lot. And the Bob moves me towards the combo. So I did just board in seven, eight, four drops. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, I'm, I'm doing it this way. Okay, I can just oppo. I'm going to keep this. The first ever turn one opposition agent on the play. And I'm just doing it now before days and Swords of Plowshares are live, before they could fetch in response. Just put this card on the stack. Don't force it, will me. All right, deal. Fetch land, fetch land. Boo. Boo. Reardane. It's probably still really good. I promise you some amount of cards in their hand are bad right now. And it's going to be really hard to get to three mana for a sort a, a prismatic ending. The oppo agent, Jillin. Oh, baby. I was going to bob, but I think I'd rather him. Just kept a card with Preordain. Let's try to soften up these lands or answers to oppo. When I play decks like this, I generally prefer to constrict what my opponent can do before advancing what I'm doing. Like, beat up their hand, uh, Force of Will. Uh, hitting Flooded Strand sucks because it was already dead, but taking Force of Will is really nice. I wonder if they just found that, or they didn't have a blue card, or they can just beat Oppo Agent some other way. Yeah, Flooded Strand. We're doing it. Oh yeah, late line right on time. I don't think there's a flash creature for one blue or black that can punish me here. Nurturing Pete Land, playing around days, get this Bob in. All right, Bob, don't kill me. But I am attacking for five a turn. There's no five drops in my deck. So as long as nothing else changes, I will always be doing more to my opponent than to myself. Wasteland? Oh, yeah. Tell me more about that. Splat. <laughs> oh, my God. After the first three rounds... I, I don't even feel bad about how disgusting this is. And I'm going to push my advantage with Bitter Blossom. I think my own cards are the only way I can lose, but I take a maximum 5 damage a turn between Bob and Blossom, and my opponent's taking more than that. And my Bob just steady delivering lands for me. Don't even worry about it. And I'm going to cast this Ley Line. I have this combo in my deck. Put this thing on the stack. Opponent's looking pretty dead. Okay, they're hoping Bob kills me. I flip uh, Blightsteel Colossus and then also hurt myself another way somehow. Bob flip Bob. Give me that one him to Turok for the road. Which hit Predict and Snapcaster. Oh, Snapcaster would have tangled. Yeah, Snapcaster actually would have uh, stabilized this board. That's awkward. Do I not attack with Oppo now? Oh no, because three damage makes the fetch unfetchable anyway. Yeah, we're good. I can attack with the creatures I have. Oh, Snapcaster Mage. Opponent confirmed in the chat that the Force of Will was their first draw step after the turn one oppo. <laughs> yep, that is always how it works. But we recouped the back half of this league. And in the front half, even though we lost the matches, we did the thing more than once. The Contamination Lock. We started out the league strong with a Contamination Lock and then uh, lost to some... Efficient and also combo decks, which are two of the worst things, which is basically the legacy format I have described for you. I actually think this deck is maybe actually good against control decks. Like it, People are taking their time letting you set up, letting you get advantage with Bob or uh, him to Tarak, and then where Contamination actually ends the game. But... Playing against multiple decks with artifact mana, multiple decks with force of will, and quick clocks. Tough league, but we rarely see control decks in the moto queues anyway. We tend to see a lot of combo there. And the main talk with like the Thoughtseize and the Hymn to Turox and Oppo Agents isn't even so that soft a combo. Like Most of the cards in our main deck have some text against combo. And we have a combo of our own. So I think this is a really respectable thing to be trying to do. I think there is a lot of variability in the three drop slot. I don't know that you need all four contaminations. Maybe opposition agents just a better card than contamination straight up. 
and you can go three and three on those. You could even save contamination for like mid game situations and have another Liliana in your deck. But then we're we're drifting further away from God's truth. It's just a thing you can do. The number of lands felt pretty good. Chrome Mox was good every time I drew it. Four Dark Rituals, definitely. I think I'd play six if I could. And the token beatdown strat, like if when the dust settles, if Bitter Blossom and Jadar are, are chunking, it does put the opponent in the position to actually do something with the game. Like if you miss on your combo, if they force the contamination, like you still have some sort of token engine in play. I like that about the deck a lot. The sideboard needs work. I don't think the mind break traps are something we're interested in. Like if we get turn zeroed, we're just dead. Deal with it. We got ley lines to try to slow that sort of thing down. Those could be better cards for fair matchups, like more sudden edicts, some fatal pushes, or something like that. Maybe even like cast down or actual doom blade. Just something that destroys Murktide Regent intentionally uh, and targeted, rather than sudden edict that can sometimes miss. But for a first draft, I'm pretty happy with this. Swaggery, thank you for submitting Contamination Prison. Everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you had as much fun as I did playing this thing. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the links in the video description that help out the channel, my Patreon, my TCG player, Coalesce Apparel. Use the code Bosch and Roll for 10% off your order. All that stuff is right under the video if you choose to pursue it. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.